Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another meal prep video. In today's video, we are doing a no cook meal prep. That's right, the oven is not going on, the stove is not going on, no instant pot, no air fryer. We are gonna be having things this week that do not require any heating. So for breakfast prep this week, it's gonna be chocolate chip, peanut butter, overnight oats. And then for lunch prep, I'm gonna do, I don't really know what to call it yet. It's kind of like a chicken ranch BLT wrap. I'm actually gonna be using flatbread for the wraps. And then I may put together like a cucumber tomato salad with that. And then I also have a couple DIY dinner kits to put together this week and my snacks. So if you wanna see how I meal prep breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks for my husband and I, then stay with me. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Christy and I'm planning us healthy. If you're new here, like I said, my name is Christy. I'm currently following the WW Blue program, but on my channel, I do provide the points for all three Weight Watcher programs, and I also give calories as well. But you don't need to be on any type of weight loss program to get tips and ideas from my channel. So let's get started with meal prep, and make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you like these type of videos. So we are starting off with breakfast. I'm doing chocolate chip, peanut butter, overnight oats. For this recipe, it comes out to six points on blue and green, three points on purple, and 234 calories. And that's for the ingredients that I use, so I always encourage everyone to scan your own items because different brands can have different points and different amounts. So just kinda use this as a guide and tweak it and make it your own. As always in my videos, any of the recipes that I'm sharing in my meal prep video will be listed down in the description box below. I'll put a direct link, as well as any of the items that I use, like my measuring spoons, meal prep containers, anything that you see me using, I try to put a link down below for that. So the way that I'm doing it, I'm gonna be using one third cup of oats. I'm gonna use a half a cup of unsweetened almond milk. You can use regular kind or the vanilla. I intertwine them, just depends on what I have on hand. I did have vanilla, so I'm gonna use that one. I prefer the vanilla, actually. And then we're also gonna need a half a tablespoon of chia seeds. We also need one teaspoon of brown sugar replacement. I have used Swerve and Lakanto. I prefer the Lakanto kind. They have golden and they have classic. So golden is like the brown sugar. We're also gonna need some PB2. So there are two different kinds of PB2 that you can use for this, for this recipe. I love the chocolate kind, the peanut butter with cocoa. That is so good in this recipe. Now I will let you know if you're following WW and you're following points for the cocoa one, it is for two tablespoons, it's actually two points rather than the one. So on the regular PB2, you can have two tablespoons for one point. And then on this one, it's actually two points for the two tablespoons. However, two tablespoons is 13 grams. If you just bump it down to 12 grams, it becomes one point. So if you're watching your point, points real close like that, just keep that in mind that you just have to bump it down a little bit to make it the one point. We're also gonna need a tablespoon of sugar-free syrup. I usually use Maple Farms, but I didn't have any, so I'm gonna use this Mrs. Butterworth's. And also chocolate chips. So normally I use a teaspoon of mini chocolate chips, which is one point worth, but for these, I'm gonna use the Lilies. This is chocolate salted caramel. I can have 16 for one point. So super easy to put this together. I'm gonna actually, I think I'm gonna use this one with the handle, seeing as how I'm getting low on my oats. So just go through, and I just use this funnel. I always put the dry ingredients in first, and then I put the wet ingredients after. I'm using eight ounce mason jars. I'll link these down below. Just keep in mind, if you're using the eight ounce, this is gonna come right to the top. So when you add the milk at the end, make sure you have like a butter knife or something so that the milk kind of seeps down in there because sometimes it can come up over the funnel. So I'm just putting the one third cup of oats in each one. Now I'm gonna put a teaspoon of the sweetener. 
Next, I'm gonna put in my PB2. So I actually prefer this kind, but I don't have very much left, so I'm just gonna use regular PB2. So if you wanna be exact with your calories and points, you could weigh this out. It's a lot easier to weigh it. You can be a lot more precise. But since I'm on points, I'm only using two tablespoons and you can actually have three tablespoons of this for a point. So I'm just gonna use a measuring spoon since I have that little bit of playroom in there. Next, I'm gonna be putting in a half a tablespoon of chia seeds. I just like to add these for that heart health and they really bulk it up. So if you don't use these, I would suggest using less of the milk. Also, if you don't use these, it does save you a point, but for me, the point of good health is worth it. So half a tablespoon in each one. Next, I'm gonna put in the tablespoon of sugar-free syrup. Now I'm adding in the half a cup of almond milk. So as you can see, I'm putting my funnel back on there. That's because as you can see in there, there's not really a whole lot of room left. So what I have to do is just kind of, I'm trying to see if you can see down in there. I do that and as you can see, it's gonna come up over, but if I just take a butter knife, it'll go right back down. And then just take it, take the butter knife and just kind of stir it all together. And then this will thicken in the fridge overnight. So all I do is put the tops on them, put it in the fridge, it'll thicken overnight. We eat these cold, but you can definitely warm them. I prefer them cold, but I know a lot of people don't like cold oats. So I know a lot of people that um, heat them up. So that is all we do there. So now I'm just gonna add the rest of the milk to them. I'm not gonna add the chocolate chips yet because I do prefer the chocolate chips to sit on top and then stir them in the day that I eat them. But that's completely up to you. If you wanna add the chocolate chips and stir them in, you can certainly do that. All right, last thing I'm gonna do is add the chocolate chips. So I can have 16 in each one for the one point. So there we go. That is what it looks like. These are so good. And there is breakfast. So, so easy. So now these will just go in my fridge and we'll eat them cold tomorrow. For lunch prep this week, again, no cooking. Today I'm gonna make, I don't really know what to call it. It's gonna be kind of like a chicken ranch BLT wrap. I'm estimating these are gonna come out to about five points each and right around 300 calories. And I'm thinking I may put together a cucumber tomato salad just to have on the side with it. Haven't quite decided that, I'll decide as I go. So let me show you what I'm gonna end up using for these. I have these flatbreads that I get from Aldi. These are two points each or 100 calories. And then for the chicken, I'm just gonna use this uh, oven roasted chicken breast. For this kind, you can have three ounces for one point. And I haven't decided if I'm gonna use two ounces or three ounces. I'm thinking probably three, but I'll see what it looks like on there, just so that I can get a little bit more protein on there. The other thing I have here is I do have some leftover turkey from, this is the fully cooked turkey that you get from Aldi. So I wanna use that up. So I'm actually gonna use that in place of it, but I'm gonna count it the same points. That's one point for this as well. And if you're counting calories on this one, it's uh, 60 calories for two ounces. And then I think I'm gonna add just some shredded mozzarella to it. This I can have an eighth of a cup for one point, or an eighth of a cup would be 40 calories. 
And then for the ranch dressing type thing, I'm just gonna use a tablespoon of light mayonnaise on each one, mixed with about a half a teaspoon of this ranch seasoning. I'm also gonna be adding a little bit of basil to it. And then I'm gonna do some bacon. So if you watched my grocery haul, you may have seen that I bought this bacon. Normally my husband and I are not fans of turkey bacon, but we do like using fully cooked bacon for our sandwiches. You know, you don't have to cook it, you just put it on there. But they were all out of the regular fully cooked bacon. So we got this turkey bacon and I did try it and it's not too bad. I think it's great for a sandwich. I don't know that I would like it so much like with eggs. With eggs, I really kind of like to have regular bacon, but this is pretty good. And for this kind, where's my other box? For this kind, it's four slices is one point and six slices is two, but you can have one and a third for zero. So that's what I'm gonna do because I'm just gonna break it up anyway. So I'm just gonna use about one and a third slices on each one. And then calories on this is 50 calories for two slices. I'm also going to use just some iceberg lettuce and also a tomato, but I'm not gonna put the tomato on there. What I'll do is just dice up the tomato and put it in these little containers. And then that way my husband and I can just kind of open the wrap the day we have it and put it on there. I just, tomatoes can tend to get it a little bit soggy. So I'm gonna put together the ranch dressing mix or whatever you wanna call it. So I'm just gonna put all six tablespoons in here. So 90 milliliters. And then I'm gonna put in about three teaspoons of the seasoning. And actually this is a half a teaspoon, that's all right. And then just mix that together. Something else you could use instead of this, I've actually used a Laughing Cow Cheese Wedge like in place of mayonnaise and cheese. It's just a one point for the wedge. That's an option if you don't wanna do mayonnaise. It's not gonna give it the ranch flavor, but you could still always add the ranch seasoning if you wanted. Okay, so I'm just gonna put one of these together just to show you how I'm doing it. So normally I would put the lettuce on the bottom first, but because I'm using iceberg lettuce, I'm afraid that the water from it is gonna kinda make this a little bit soggy. So I'm gonna put my meat down first. So I think what I'm going to do is just for now use like equal amounts of the turkey and the chicken. So let's see what three ounces is going to look like. I'll do an ounce and a half of the turkey, at least until the turkey runs out. Actually, I think I'll put like an ounce of the turkey on each one because I think I've probably only got about six ounces in here and then I'll do the rest with the chicken. So there is no recipe for this. This is just however you wanna make your wrap. You can put whatever you want on it, just as you're going add up the points or calories. Okay, so there we've got three ounces. I'm gonna add one and a third. So actually I'll just Break this into three, and there's my third. So that way I have, there's my third pieces for each one. So just break the bacon up however you want. Like that, that's plenty. Next I'm gonna add the tablespoon of the ranch dressing, seasoning, sauce, whatever you want to call it. And then just try to even it out the best you can. If you want, you could put the sauce right on the bottom, like on the wrap. I try not to put the wet stuff down on the wrap because I want the sauce to be inside, not on the bread. Now I'm gonna add just a little bit of basil If you want to add some oregano, whatever seasonings you want to add. And then I'm going to add a little bit of black pepper. And probably don't need too much salt because actually I don't think I'm going to put salt on the others because there's salt, there's enough sodium in the meat. Then I'm going to do an eighth of a cup of the mozzarella. If you want to weigh it out to be more precise, you definitely could do that. 
And then finally, I'm gonna add a little bit of lettuce. And then like I said, for the tomato, I'll just put that in a container. We could add that the day we have it. I don't even know if we'll want tomato on it actually. Might be good just the way it is. Okay. Then just try to fold the sides in like that. And just roll it up. Just like that. Take my meal prep container. And then if you want to cut it in half. And there we go. And just put that right in the meal prep container. And that is going to be lunch. And then, like I said, I think I'm probably going to do a cucumber salad on the side after. All right, now that I showed you that one, let me show you what I normally do to do them in bulk. So I just wanted to show you that one just to kind of show you what to put on each one. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take the rest of the meat and I'm going to measure out so that I have individual portions for each one so that I can do them in bulk. So for the turkey, I'm just going to put an ounce over here. An ounce there. So just kind of portion out your meat. That way when you do them all, you can just grab them. You don't have to keep measuring out or weighing out each individual one. That was perfect for that turkey. And then just add to each of those, I'll add two ounces of the chicken. Now just take the flatbreads and just line them up and then just start adding everything to them. Did you ever stop and think why spend too much time just getting ready? Let me be honest. I don't know a single thing that I haven't done to make you notice me. Let me be real here. When I see you, my heart starts racing, but I don't know if I like this chasing and playing and waiting around. It's a shame that my hands start shaking all of the time when you're around me. But this time, this time, girl, I know what's bothering me. Okay, so those are done. So now I'm gonna cut up my tomato, put it in the individual containers. And then I think for the cucumber tomato salad, I'm gonna use these grape tomatoes. I'll just cut those up with some cucumber and put them in the side. And then I think I'll just drizzle over some light Italian dressing for those. All right, so now I'm just gonna add a splash of Olive Garden light Italian dressing. Okay, so these are our lunches. So it ended up being five points and about 300 calories for the wrap. And then I did just a, a small tomato cucumber salad with a little bit of Olive Garden light Italian, not even a point worth. You can actually have three quarters of a tablespoon of this for zero points and I didn't even put 
maybe a quarter of a tablespoon. And calories on this one are 30 calories for two tablespoons. And then I have our little containers with the tomato in that. Honestly, I don't even know if we'll end up using that because of the fact that we have the little tomato cucumber salad on the side. So I'll just, we'll just decide the day that we have it. If not, I'll just save them and we'll have it in salad some other time, maybe like for dinner or something. So that is it for lunches this week. All right, now I'm gonna wash my fruit. I have some blueberries and also a big thing of strawberries. So I'm gonna get these washing. And what I do to wash these is just use my OXO salad spinner. Well, not the top part. <laughs> Set that aside. So what I usually put in is one part vinegar to about four parts water. I think I'm also gonna go through and cut the tops off the strawberries too. Now I'm just gonna let those sit in that vinegar water for just about five to 10 minutes. All right, after those have been sitting in there for a little bit, now I'm just gonna rinse them off real well. And for anybody who's new wondering about the vinegar water, I've just always done it that way. My grandmother taught me to do that, and so I've always done it. She claimed that it helped getting any get any bacteria off, but honestly, unless I have a lot like this, I don't usually do it. A lot of times, I'll just take a small thing of blueberries, if I'm just having a few, and just rinse them underwater real well. So after those are rinsed, now I'm just gonna put them on unpaper towels and let them just sit and dry. I'm gonna cut this watermelon, so we're actually gonna have a lot of fruit, but I'm actually using this for today. Today we are making these turkey cheddar sausages. I've mentioned these before. I got these uh, at Aldi. They are so good, and they're only three points. And for calories, it's 120 calories. They also have a Monterey Jack one, but this is just the turkey with cheddar, and they're so good. Like I said, only three points, as opposed to if you get like a regular brat that are nine points. So we're gonna be having these for dinner, and I figure I would cut up and have some watermelon with it. So we will end up having watermelon throughout the week as well. So as you can see, we got a lot of fruit this week. And then just put my strawberries and blueberries in there. Okay, so there is all our fruit. So that way it's all, this is all washed, ready to go. We can just sit it in the fridge for snacking. And then, like I said, the watermelon we're gonna have today and then whatever's left we'll have throughout the week. Okay, so now what I'm doing is making little snack packs. I'm using these pretzel crisps with the Laughing Cow Cheese. I'm gonna weigh out 28 ounces of these, which is three points or 110 calories. And then I'm gonna use one wedge, which is 30 calories or one point. So this will be a four point snack or 140 calories. So this is what it ends up looking like after I have it in there. So that's the 28 grams plus the wedge. And then I just keep these in my fridge. It does not make the pretzels stale at all. A lot of people have asked me if putting the pretzels in the fridge makes it stale, but it doesn't. All right, and that's my little nighttime snack bags. 
And then throughout the week, I also have pudding, I have yogurt, so I have a variety of things. I don't necessarily eat the, all the stuff every day, but it just gives me options throughout the week. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is get my dinner kits together. So if you're new to my channel, I make DIY dinner kits. They're similar to like the meal delivery kits that you can order. I just do my own, much cheaper. So this night, what I usually do is go through my list of what I'm having for dinner and determine what ones I can do ahead of time. So for example, strombolis, I'm not gonna pre-prep those. The stuffed chicken breast, I don't even know how I'm doing that one yet. Breakfast bowls, that's just eggs, uh, chicken sausage, and canned white potatoes, so there's nothing to prep for those. So really the only one that leaves is the garlic parmesan salmon and slow cooker barbecue meatloaf. So if you're new to my channel, I pretty much do a salmon one every single week. I just do a different type of salmon. The only difference is with the meatloaf, I'm actually gonna combine the meatloaf and have that ready to go. It's a slow cooker recipe, so that way it's all ready to go, and then the morning that I make it, I can just dump it into the crock pot. So for this one, super easy. I'm just putting everything into the bag. What I have here is the topping for the salmon. So this is one eighth of a cup each of panko breadcrumbs, regular breadcrumbs, and Parmesan, and then a little bit of Italian seasoning. And then in here, I have one garlic clove and a tablespoon of light butter. So those are in those, ready to go for the topping. So now I'm just gonna take some broccoli and throw it in the bag. This is not washed. I don't wash it or anything like that. Just have it portioned out, and then I'll wash it the night we have it. So this is basically how I do my dinner kits, with the exception of, like I said, the meatloaf one. I will just at least put the meatloaf together. The sides I won't worry about. I think that's good for that. And then for this one, I'm just doing this 90 second ready rice. So this, there's no prep to do with that one. But if I were having something like potatoes or something, I would weigh out the potatoes, portion them out, put them in the bag. And then the other thing is I have my salmon. I picked this up from Publix. So I just took it out of the container that it came in and put it in this bag. And then this is about a pound of salmon. So that's going in there. And then I put these in there and that's it. That way it's just portioned out and ready to go. Everything's weighed and measured, ready to go the night that I have them. This one is really a real easy one, but if you have something that has a lot more ingredients to it that you have to weigh out, those are the ones that it really comes in handy throughout the week. Okay, so now I'm putting together the Crock-Pot barbecue meatloaf. So like I said, this one I do a little bit different because I'm actually putting all the ingredients together and actually making the loaf. So the points on this are two points for blue and purple, three points on green, 188 calories. That's because I'm using ground turkey breast. So if you use 96% extra lean ground beef, it will increase the points to six points per serving for all programs. And also uh, what I usually do when I have this for dinner, I usually do a double portion. So that way it ends up being like four points for me on blue and then I have whatever for a side. So let me show you how easy this is to put together. You can, one of the things you can do if you want to put onions and peppers in it, that's completely optional. I usually always put a shallot or onion in there. I'm actually gonna use an onion today because I don't have any shallot but I am cutting up some peppers to have with the dinner tonight. So I figure I will go ahead and throw some peppers in there as well. So here is my one and a half pounds of ground turkey breast. So I'm gonna add in my green peppers. And I think I'm gonna do a little bit of orange peppers too. Okay, so that's how much pepper I'm gonna put in there. I'm not gonna to put too much in there. All right, now I'm gonna cut up my onion. So you can do this however you want. If I like mine to be really, really diced, like almost minced. So if you just would prefer to use like some dried minced onion, you can do that as well. All right, and I only want to get enough, like the equivalent of a shallot. So shallots are fairly small, so just put in that much. Okay, the next things we're gonna want are some seasonings. So in here, I have a half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, half a teaspoon of ground sage, one teaspoon of oregano, and half a teaspoon of ground mustard. 
So that goes in there. And then I'm gonna put in about a tablespoon of Worcestershire. And I'm just gonna eyeball that. I'm also gonna put in one egg. Also, I forgot to cut up my garlic. So I'm gonna use two cloves of garlic, but just use however much you want. If you prefer to use some garlic powder, you can do that as well. All right, next we're gonna put in one third of a cup of breadcrumbs. I'm just using the Italian breadcrumbs. A quarter of a cup, my recipe calls for a quarter of a cup of Velveeta shreds but I'm gonna be just using a quarter of a cup of reduced fat mozzarella. Okay, that's all that goes in there, so now I'm just gonna wash my hands because I'm gonna just dig my hands in and stir this up. If you prefer to use a spoon, you could definitely do that. Now what we're gonna do is take a gallon bag. Normally I use reusable gallon bags, but for this, I'm gonna use just the regular plastic ones because it's a lot easier to dump it into the crock pot this way. So now, just take the loaf, plop it in the bag. All right, let me get my hand washed now. Okay, now at this point, you wanna try and form it into a loaf. So also, what you can do is, you could write the instructions on the bag if you wanted to do that. So I'll have the recipe down in the link below. Now also, one thing to keep in mind is ground turkey breast doesn't have fat in it, so it's gonna be dry. So what I was gonna do is add in some, I was gonna shred up some zucchini and put that in there, but I thought I had one left, but I don't. So now since this is just a meal prep video and I'm not gonna be showing you when I actually make this, I'm not sure if I have I don't know if I have a cook with me video for this recipe or not. If I do, I'll link it down below. But the only thing you have to do is take some aluminum foil like this, like a long sheet, fold it in half like that. You're gonna put that down in the bottom of your slow cooker, your crock pot, and then just spray it real good with cooking spray. You're gonna use this to lift the meatloaf out when you're done. So then the meatloaf is gonna go right on there and you're just gonna let it cook on low for six to eight hours. Probably won't take quite eight hours because like I said, it doesn't have a lot of fat in it. And that's it, that's all there is to that. And then for the topping, I have the topping over here put together, I just gotta stir it up. In the topping, this is two tablespoons of ketchup, which I actually used no sugar added ketchup, so I'm not sure if that would change the points, but for the recipe purposes, it's two tablespoons of regular ketchup, two teaspoons of brown sugar, two teaspoons of Dijon mustard, which I didn't have, so I'm using regular mustard, and two teaspoons of Worcestershire. And then this goes over the top, like for the last 30 minutes of cooking. So like 30 minutes before you're gonna eat, you would just put this over the top of it right in your crock pot. Okay, so now I'm gonna take that and also the way that I get these out of the bag is I just take some kitchen scissors and just cut along the edges and that way it just kind of plops right in there real easy. So now I'm gonna put this down in the bottom of this bag and on the other bag, on my other dinner, you saw that I put the total points for everything that was in the kit. So I had the points down for the salmon, the rice, and then of course the broccoli was zero. So points and calories for everything. For this one, I'm just giving the points and calories for the loaf because I have, if you can see here, mashed potatoes and peas in parentheses because honestly, I can't even remember if I have peas left in my freezer. And mashed potatoes, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do mashed potatoes or if I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be using these little baby potatoes and I may just cut them up and put a little bit of oil, like olive oil, and fry them up in my air fryer. So I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna make those yet. So just put those in there, and like I said, I'll wash those the night we have it. And that is how I do my dinner kits. So like I said, this one was a little bit different because I got the meatloaf, but what a time saver this is gonna be throughout the week.
All right, so here's what we ended up with this week. So over here, I have our snacks. I have our fruit, our watermelon, strawberries and blueberries. I have the pretzels and laughing cow cheese wedges. Back there, I also have some yogurt and pudding. Those are each two points for each cup. And then I have our breakfasts, our lunches, and our dinner kits. So make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thank you all so much for watching. If you're new, I hope you'll subscribe. I'll talk to you in my next video. I'm Christy and I'm planning us healthy. And you're stronger, much stronger.